What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about an AK-47 that a lot of you guys actually probably already know a lot about uh, because it's a Wasser. <laughs> and Wassers have been around a very long time. We're talking decades. So uh, yeah, it's a Wasser. It's been around a long time, but it went away and then it came back. Uh, it's imported from Romania. And uh, the guys over at um, Century Arms are importing these again, as you guys probably already know. Let's take a look at this uh, Romanian Wasser 10 underfolder. I will give you guys a quick disclaimer. Uh, this rifle was sent to me for review and it will be going back to them uh, if I don't purchase it. But um, I've had it for a few months for testing and uh, I've also outfitted it with all kinds of extra parts that I personally bought. They didn't give me all these parts they just sent me the gun for review. And the reason why I did that is because for one, um, the original parts are just boring. <laughs> and you guys, if you know AKs, they're not anything different than what you've seen on any other Wasser. But the crappy pistol grip that's too thin for most people uh, and the wood uh, furniture up front. And that's about it. So um, I figured, you know what, let's spice this video up because there's a lot of videos on this out there already by all the big YouTubers. So I said, to myself, you know what, let's spice this video up to make it a little bit different. And uh, I'm gonna put some uh, cool furniture on here with some optics and a brake and all that stuff. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, if you don't know, for some reason, if you're one of those people who don't know what a Wasser 10 is or an underfolder AK is, uh, the gist of it is Wasser 10s are made in Romania at the Kugir uh, factory in uh, Romania. That factory has been around for well over 100 years. And uh, they got a long history of making um, weapons for the country of Romania. And uh, the uh, design of their um, AKs come directly from Russia from back when they used to be communists. So um, that means that you're getting an AK that is built with old world craftsmanship and old world technology, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, because if it ain't broke, you know, why fix it? Uh, the original AKM pattern is a fantastic design. Uh, even with its downsides, it's an amazing workhorse. So uh, the Romanian imported AKs, the Wassers in general, whether it's the Woodstock or Folder, it doesn't really matter. Um, they're gonna have hammer forge chrome line barrels, which again, if you're a gun guy, you already know that's a big deal, having a hammer forged chrome line barrel. Uh, not the best barrel for accuracy, because this is not a sniper rifle, but um, amazing for durability and longevity and service life, because um, hammer forged barrels are, are very strong, very durable. They hold their rifling very well. And then the chrome lining is uh, kind of antiquated by now, uh, especially with nitride out there. but. Um, Chrome lining has stood the test of time in combat. And essentially what that gives you is, again, longevity. You, you can abuse this thing and neglect this thing and uh, it'll keep on shooting and won't fail you because that chrome lining is actually really, 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 really durable. Uh, it does degrade accuracy a little bit, but again, this is not an accurate rifle as far as um, being a designated marksman or sniper rifle. It's not meant for that. This is a close quarters out to medium uh, range type engagements, you know, so just basic personal defense out to, um, let's just say 600 yards if you're lucky. <laughs> I, I don't even think uh, this would be the best choice for 600 yards, but you could do it. I've seen guys do it. You also get a hammer forged trunnion front and rear. Now, again, if you follow the AK world at all, then you guys know that that's a huge deal having um, hammer forged trunnions. And if you don't know what trunnions are, they're the steel blocks that the barrel is pressed into and held into the receiver in the front. 
Also, there's another block back here that's also milled and cut and all that good stuff where this stuff is bolted onto. Um, probably not as, as important as the front trunnion because this is where all the uh, impacts and explosions go. But um, for, hammer forged trunnions are absolutely a huge deal. Let me fold this up so you can get the full effect here. Uh, let's talk about the uh, underfolder first, since that's what this is, is a Wasser 10 underfolder. The uh, underfolder is famous for this right here, this compact setup. So look, look at that. Nice and compact. Very, very small. You can throw this in a backpack uh, if you wanted to. It'd have to be a fairly big backpack, but you can throw it in there. Um, I've read somewhere that uh, in Romania, uh, these are popular with uh, units up in the mountain regions. So it's very similar to what they're using up there because it's lighter It's lighter with the wire stock and the compactness of it just makes it easier to hike around with. So imagine this, you know, slung to your chest nice and tight and you're walking around the mountains. It's probably a lot easier having this kind of setup. So pretty cool. And uh, I swapped out the wood grips that are in the front here. Usually has a set of wood grips, top and bottom. Again, some people like them, some people don't. Um, in my experience, wood, especially on the AKs anyways, uh, the wood tends to absorb a lot of heat and they get hot, especially when you're dumping a lot of magazines. Um, but again, it's a personal preference. Uh, I think this specific kind of setup lends itself to the Magpul polymer or synthetic parts. Uh, it just looks fantastic because you already have this black stock, so having a, um, a yellow or red piece of wood here just kind of doesn't look balanced, whereas when it's all blacked out like this, it actually looks good this way. And then uh, to unfold it, by the way, it'll ship with one polymer uh, Magpul PMAG. And that's what it looks like when it's loaded with a mag, nice and compact. Look at that. And here's the best part about underfolders, if you don't know. Um, you can undo the wire stock without taking the magazine out. It's actually cut out, as you see right there. It's actually cut out to go over the magazine. And by the way, uh, in this configuration, the wire stock does not lock in place. You just kind of hold it here. Uh, the butt stock is rounded, so you're not going to hurt your hand. So it kind of acts like a stabilizer. Say you're in a vehicle, this is kind of nice when you're in a vehicle for close quarters kind of stuff, super close quarters kind of stuff. And then when you get out of the vehicle, you just grab this and bring it all the way back. And then that locking pin will automatically pop into place once it hits the correct hole. And then you'll take the butt, the actual butt of the weapon and fold it down and it has a detent. See that? Just locks in place like that. And now you can take a shoulder fired, accurate shot out to 600 yards if you uh, did your homework. So that's pretty nice. Not the most comfortable setup for sure. Um, these bars here um, will slap against your cheek. But again, um, in a firefight um, to defend your life, your freedom, your family, your kids, your wife, whatever, um, a couple slaps to the cheek is not going to really hurt. You're not even going to notice it under stress, adrenaline, and fear. It's not going to matter. But um, for going to the range and plinking and having fun, probably not the best setup. This is definitely a tool designed for a specific job, right? Fantastic truck gun. You throw it in your truck. You can beat up on it. You can throw gear on it. Throw it around, you know, drop it on the ground, and it's not, you're not going to cry about it. It's a it's like carrying around a jackhammer. You don't care about the jackhammer. It just does its job, busting rocks. And that's what this does. This is a jackhammer of a gun. So it's ugly yet beautiful. <laughs> um, let's go from the front. I'll show you some of the things that I've done different. So up front right here, this is a Spikes Tactical Dynacomp, uh, very similar to the battle comps uh, you see on AR-15s. And uh, I really like this. I purchased this a long time ago and never got rid of it. I got rid of the AKs that, that it was on, but I never got rid of the, uh, the Dynacomp because I love it so much. It's just a fantastic comp. It looks good and it performs really well. There's a detent right here. 
just like on any other 8K, reverse the, uh, reverse the, uh, the threads instead of uh, like a US gun. You go the opposite way, push that detent down, it, and it comes right off. Normally this will come with a slant brake, but uh, like I said, I wanted to uh, spice this video up and do something a little bit different. Put it back on, just all go all the way down like that, and then lock it into place. That's the beautiful thing about AKs, is that they, they really allow you to change out muzzle devices real easy. I love that about AKs. Uh, the front side post is similar to um, all the other um, AKMs or, or uh, Romanian or Russian style AKs. Very similar, not much difference there. And these are the Magpul grips or uh, hand guards. It has a cutout here for the sling because on this model, the sling is integrated into the, uh, what do you call this, the hand guard retaining ring, I guess it's called. That ring here that pushes back and holds this handguard in, the sling is integrated into that. Some models will have the sling uh, integrated into the gas block. This one doesn't have that, so you have that unique cutout on the Magpul. And I like that. Um, you could cut that off and then put a, a bigger handguard on here, but I didn't want to do that. Um, I actually like this setup and I like that sling mount. It's actually a very good sling mount. So when you go with the Magpul handguards, it's almost a given uh, to go with the uh, Ultimac gas tube. It's a Picatinny rail gas tube, probably the lowest mounting option that you could possibly go with when it comes to putting an optic on your gas tube. Some guys love this because it's again, super, super low profile. Uh, you can co-witness through your red dot here. And some people don't like it because um, the gas tube gets hot and uh, some people say that the heat transfers to their optic and they fry their optics. Me personally, after over 10 years of shooting AKs, I've never fried an optic. Again, I'm not a high speed, low drag, you know, black ops operator. So take it for what it's worth. <laughs> I'm nobody. So maybe my uh, mileage varies because of that. <laughs> um, but I love this. I love this setup. Uh, again, it looks good and it performs well. Uh, because this is a jackhammer of a gun, um, I put a old school Bushnell TRS-25. And if you don't know about the old Bushnell TRS-25, again, they've been around for over a decade and they haven't really changed much, except for maybe this dial here that's been moved to a different location. But these things work. They're a red dot, they're small, compact, low profile, and windage and elevation adjustments here with the different brightnesses. I think there's a... 11 settings for brightness. It's just a simple red dot. There might even be some new ones with green. I don't know But yeah, it's got a button cell battery in there and this thing works awesome, you know again uh, Cheap you can probably get these for 50 to 60 bucks uh, Depending on where you get them online Most gun shops have them for about 70 to 75 but online you can get them dirt cheap uh, on sale and they work Look at that you don't need to get a Trigicon or an Aimpoint. The uh, Bushnell TRS-25 will do the job, trust me, especially for a truck gun. You're not gonna need a $600 optic to do what this thing's gonna do. And then the sight here, just your typical AK sight, uh, graduated out to, I don't know, what is that, a thousand meters? Yeah, good luck hitting something uh, at a thousand meters with the uh, bullet, bullet coefficient of an AK-47 round. <laughs> Probably not gonna happen. So the dust cover is a ribbed style. There are some models that have no ribs, but this one's ribbed for your pleasure. <laughs> kind of like that. Very nice. And then, of course, the receiver is a Wasser 10 style, so that means there's no dimple in the receiver. Again, if you don't know about AKs, um, a lot of AKs out there will have a dimple here to stiffen the receiver as well as give a little support to the magazines. Uh, the Wassers will have two plates um, spot welded inside the receiver. You can even see the little spot welding here. I don't know if it shows up on camera. One, two, three, four, and they're on both sides. One, two, three, four. There's little plates in there. You can probably see those plates on camera. I don't know. And those plates actually stiffen the receiver right here, since there's no dimples. 
And then they have a little bend in there as well to help stabilize your magazine. A lot of, a lot of people don't know that, believe it or not. So as you can see, mag pull mags, suckers are in there nice and snug. You don't hear any clicking or wobbling. That's nice. The magwell is cut perfectly. And then your standard AK magazine release, which is way too small. I wish they'd make these things oversized just from the factory. So tiny. Steel trigger guard, just like you'd see on any AK. Again, the pistol grip would normally be the crappy plastic. I put a mag pull. This one specifically is a Magpul, what is it called? This is the Magpul uh, AK, AK Plus. And the plus means that it's that sticky rubber. So it has almost like a sticky kind of feel to it, which I really like. And uh, they basically knocked it out of the park too with the design. Uh, the only design I would like better than this would be the uh, US Palm ones. Those are amazing, but uh, I don't have one of those yet. Uh, on the receiver, you can see it has the uh, Y and X stamps for the, uh, the hammer pin and trigger pins, which is nice. If you look on this side of the gun, there's no rail mount. That could be a pro or a con to some people. Me personally, um, I like the clean look of not having one. And since I'm running uh, a Ultimac on the front, I don't need one. And then back here, you have your sling swivel built into the, uh, the locking pin. And then of course, there is your buttstock. It's just a wire buttstock. There's a different couple of different models depending on where, what countries it's made. Some of these are actually round tubes. Um, this one is milled out of solid steel. So I don't know, I, I personally prefer the solid steel better. It just seems tougher. Uh, but again, personal preference. And then that buttstock that isn't the most comfy, but gets the job done. Pretty cool, right? And since we were talking about magazines, uh, this was the Magpul 30 rounder. Let's try um, X-Tech Mag 47. Yep, a little bit of wobble. Let's try the old steel Romanian surplus. Get in there. Of course, that has all kinds of wobble. <laughs> uh, the legendary Bulgarian Circle 10, probably the best on earth. Hey, even that has a little bit of a wobble, but I trust my life to it for sure. It is a Bulgarian Circle 10. The good old fashioned Tapcos. A little bit of a wobble. And last but not least, this is a Pro Mag with the steel front and rear lugs, believe it or not, and metal base plate. Nice. Say what you want about Pro Mag, but they've stepped their game up over the last decade. I've seen them step their game up and uh, they perform, man. It is what it is, they work. There's your dust cover. Again, nothing to write home about. Recoil spring. Again, standard mill spec. There's the piston. Looks great. And your bolt. And your frying pan and extractor. And then here is your selector lever, just your standard selector lever, none of those uh, enhanced ones to take it out. Just pop it up and it comes right out. Yeah, inside here, you'll see that it comes with a regular shepherd's hook, nothing enhanced in there, and then your uh, twisted wire for the hammer spring, and also double hooked trigger. 
Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a double hook trigger in there. And uh, the trigger is made by Century Arms. I believe it's the Rack 1 trigger from Century Arms, so it's US made. Can you guys see the red dot there? That really does change the game, guys. So how does this thing perform out in the field, out in the range? Guys, this is a Romanian built AK-47. It goes bang every time you pull the trigger. I've never had any issues with Romanian AK-47s. Love them or hate them, trash them, whatever you want to say about Wassers. Every single Wasser that I've owned, I think I own three or four now if I remember right, uh, in pistol and rifle configurations. And they've all been 100% flawless. Um, it's just my personal opinion. Again, no one's paying me to say this. Uh, they've been fantastic guns. Again, they're made in Romania and those guys know what they're doing. Um, are they super accurate? Um, I wouldn't say they're the most accurate. I've had some that had canted sights. This one doesn't seem to have canted sights. They seem to be uh, pretty much dead on from the factory. Uh, if you don't know, the CO number will tell you which year it was built. This is a factory built AK-47 built in 2019 and uh, they seem to be doing a good job. Other than those rivets being slightly flattened on top, they don't seem to be over riveted to where it's bending the receiver and uh, they're definitely not under riveted. That's a problem too with some of these in the old days. Uh, they weren't riveted enough and they look like mushrooms growing out of the ground. Not, not the case with this one. Uh, I like the look of cleaning rods on AKs uh, and I would prefer to have a bayonet lug but unfortunately this does not have a bayonet lug. All right, guys, so there you have it. That is my overview of the Romanian Wasser 10 underfolder imported by Century Arms. Let me know what you guys think about this thing. You like it? Do you hate it? Do you like the underfolder design? Do you like side folders better? Let me know in the comments below what you prefer or what you think about this one. Me personally, um, I've always liked these just because I thought they looked cool. And now that I have my hands on one, um, I love it, man. I don't want to give this back. I think I'm going to buy this one. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Hit that like button to support my channel. I appreciate it. it helps me out a lot. Hit that ring uh, notification so you can uh, be notified when I upload new videos. And like I said before, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the uh, underfolder AKs by Century Arms. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.